Hey everybody, it's Kyle with Pixel Wave, and today we're going to UV this chair. So, uh, everybody, you guys, we got this chair, part two. Um, I wanted to introduce you guys all to Matt Re Romo, who is a uh, graphic designer based in LA. Been getting into 3D, a uh, friend of mine, um, that I wanted to have along for this discussion to have him be able to ask questions that, uh, with things that I might just end up breezing over um, because. I forget, you know, I forget what it's like to be new. So I've got him on the line. Uh, Matt, if you want to say hi to everybody, they should be able to hear you. Hey, what's up, y'all? <laughs> so we're going to keep him around. Um, I'm basically going to, quote unquote, teach him how to UV. Um, he does have some 3D experience already. Um, but yeah, we'll just dive in and we'll just start talking about 3Ds. And then, um, like I kind of expressed offline, Matt, if you have questions while I'm working, um, please express them. Please stop me. Um, yeah, so I can kind of explain if there's any like gaps in knowledge or that kind of thing. Cool? Cool. So um, the basic of UVs, right? Um, what is UVing? Um, can you actually tell me what you know about UVing, Matt? Um, I don't know. I don't know much about it. I know that there's, it's basically like the surface and you're, un, it's basically the surface of a 3D model and it's basically for putting textures over a 3D model essentially. Uh, it's just mapping it all out so it's clean and every like all your textures are clean and not warped. Um, that's essentially what I know. <clears throat> yeah, so kind of like I'm trying to find a picture off here and actually let me make sure that I've got the right screen being recorded at this point for you. Yeah, that's going. Okay, good. Um, think of like a chocolate Santa, how the chocolate Santa is 3D and I'm trying to find a picture of it spread out. Uh, chocolate Santa foil. Let's see here. I grab something like this. I don't know if you guys are familiar with these chocolates, and this is kind of what I what I use as an example, how we get something like this Santa, and I can't find it flattened out. Um, uh, this is maybe something where you get this, this 2D wraparound, kind of like the foil around this 3D object. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking uh, a snapshot of a 3D object on a 2D plane. So similar to like also a cardboard box if we flatten something like that out. Um, chocolate Santa, let's say UVs, foil, let's see if that, oh yeah, here you go. Okay, so something like this is what I was looking for. So we're essentially taking this 3D object, flattening out into a 2D space so that we can add textures and then wrap the foil back onto the 3D object so it makes sense. Um, kind of doesn't make sense obviously here, right? Like you can't see his feet, um, you don't really know it. I mean, kind of look like hands, but there's no objectivity to it. Uh, until it actually goes on to the object, then it starts to end up making sense. So for those of you guys out there, uh, that's kind of what UV in is in a nutshell. It doesn't affect the model. It's just flattening out the skin of the object um, in, in a sense like this. And actually, let me save this guy too, because uh, we can save that later. Questions on that? Uh, what does UV stand for? Like, I, is it I like don't like know. UV or something like that? Um, is that what it is? It's like another plane? I think, yeah, I think that would make sense. And to be completely honest, I don't flip a no. Um, I would assume it was, yeah, because everything's in a one to one or zero to one space, right? So um, if I just open this up, that's a good question too. And you're probably going to stump me a few times uh, in this conversation, which is cool. I mean, please do. So we have this um, zero to one space. So if we think like this is, oops, this is U and this is V. Um, so it is technically a plane. We're working in a 2D space. It's not a 3D right. space. Um, so yeah, that would be my guess was UV. Right. <laughs> uh, one other dumb question. Um, it looks like, so you're, you're using 2016 uh, yeah. PS Max and I'm using 2020. So the icons look a little bit different. Uh, it's close enough though. They're, they're in the same locations. They do look different. Yeah. I know like even... Even 18 looks different from 16 from, I believe, even 20. Um, yeah. So a lot of times, if you guys are working on, on newer versions, and I do need to get everything updated, um, if you hover over, and I'll try to allow hover overs, uh, they should be in the same location. They'll look slightly different, but if you hover over, it should say the same thing. And if anything, um, you'll actually have more tools than I will at my disposal uh, moving okay. forward with 2020 and things. So you've got some other cool, sh cool stuff. Ooh, I don't want to curse. Uh, that uh, you'll have access to that I won't. Right. Cool. cool. Um, okay, so let's just get into it. Uh, we're, we're gonna unwrap the easiest thing I can think of. Um, I, do wanna, I do want to clarify that 
we're doing uh, um, traditional UV unwrapping. Uh, there's this thing called a UVW map. Have you seen these, Matt? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the quick, the easy mode that doesn't always work, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a modifier. Any modifier that's in Max uh, cannot, uh, dare I say, cannot be baked into the model itself. So it's a, a tool used in Max to help um, speed up workflows, right? But if I take this model to something like Substance Painter, uh, it doesn't understand what this UV map is. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, because it's a, a 3ds Max specific uh, modifier. So what we're doing is actually um, unwrapping the model itself so that we can use it, uh, bake it into the model, and, and it'll be transferred into other programs um, like Substance Painter or uh, you know Unreal Engine or in an FBX format so you can transfer it to another 3D application. Um, so that's another good point is... If I put this UV map modifier on this, and just so you guys can see it, I'll just put some digits in. Um, if I try to transfer, export this and transfer this out without UVs on it, it's not going to transfer into another 3D application again because it's a, it's a 3ds Max modifier. That makes sense? Yep. So uh, easiest way to do this is um, I've got my little shortcuts up here. Just go to the modifiers list, and uh, we're going to type in unwrap. Just start doing UN. Uh, and you see this down here, and you can throw that guy on. Um, this is is a quote-unquote modifier, but it's not a max-specific modifier um, when we bake the UVs into the mesh itself. Uh, so that's kind of the perks of using this and actually taking the time to unwrap something. Uh, what else about that? Questions about that? Uh, I was wondering, when you, when you select it, do you with the Turbo Smooth, do you have it on the ISO line display right now? I do not. Yep. Oh, okay. So I talk about that in part one if you guys have. Uh, I'm not a fan of Isoline Display. And actually, let's break this shit so you can see this um, and why I'm not a fan of it. If I get rid of this uh, unwrap map by right clicking on it um, and I go Isoline Display and then I bake this down. So if I just go to right click, convert, convert to edible poly, it bakes this stack down and you get this like weird funkiness. So um, it also, like, if I uncontrol Z out of this, you don't know how many polys are in this, right? Like, mm -hmm. if we need to optimize this stuff, like, if I if I do this and I go crazy, like, like, eh, not too crazy. And then I do isoline display. <laughs> you don't know how many polys are on this. You don't know how to optimize this. Um, yep. Meshes do need to be optimized. Like, I guess, getting on a little bit of a tangent, if, like these meshes here or these um, edges here don't play a factor into the mesh at all. So if I delete these, um, it looks the same. So mm -hmm. essentially we want to be going through and deleting these that we don't need prior to UV uh, to get rid of wasted polygons. And again, I kind of explained that in one where uh, part one where there's faces in this thing. Like if I go in here, like these faces, you don't see it all. Uh, mm -hmm. there's really no point to having these in the mesh. So um, having this, coming back to your original question, having this isoline display doesn't allow us to see what's going on in our scene or we could forget uh, and mm -hmm. run into issues. Right, cool. Makes, makes sense? Yep. Okay. Um, any other questions before moving forward? No. Okay. So we click this guy or go through the modifier list, start typing UN, get you down to unwrap, kind of gets that popped on quickly. Um, let me isolate this. What we see is the seams that have been created for us, right? But if I go to open UV editor, it's probably gonna look like crap. Because if you look in here, they're all stacked on top of each other. I don't even know like what this looks like, but we're just gonna do this so you see what this ends up looking like. So if I go down to checkered pattern and say checkered pattern, it's gonna give us this weird looking thing. Now this should be uh, it should look like a, a regular squared checkered pattern. It shouldn't be, like if you see here, we get all this warping. Mm -hmm. This might be kind of what you're running into issues-wise with your bag. You were kind of talking about how you were trying to do something there at work. Um, so we need to go in and fix these seams. Uh, and there's a couple ways to do that. The, the biggest thing I like to do is just to follow the current seams that we have in here. Um, you're familiar with this because you did the chamfer zone grenade 
and then mm-hmm. the the BB-8 or whatever kind of knockoff guy, right? Yeah. Yep. So did you end up doing the thing where he would grab, you know, these and then like grab this line and then tell it to be a seam and then he would do um, it all the way around? That wasn't the technique that he was using, no. Okay. He would, he would grab a bunch of polygons and then break them. Interesting. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that he was actually a couple different ways he did did it, and it seems like there's a bunch of different ways to skin the cat too. So totally. Like, there's yeah. like tons of different programs. There's I I I don't know. There, I don't not, I'm not dealing with crazy crazy models with an ArcViz and product uh, visualization either. I am, but I don't see the need for something outside um, with the workflow that I'm going to show you. So yeah. here's this workflow. Um, I can grab a couple of these edges, right? And we hit this um, loop X, Y, mm-hmm. or e- X, Y edges. And it gives us these edges here. Now, blue means it's a seam. Red means it's not yet a seam. So this one has been broken off, as I was asking you. This one hasn't. So if I just click here, we go seam. And I'll do the same here. So I'll grab this one. It's going to grab that entire line. And then, which button is that? I'm sorry. Uh, which? Uh, the one that uh, creates a seam. This guy down here. Convert it. Okay. Edge to seam selection. Okay. Um, are you on your system by chance? Uh, I am right now, actually. Do you see it on your side? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's in there in 2020 somewhere. Um, so what I, what I want to do is I want to grab this entire loop. And in part one, I talk about these Ys that are here that show the corners that we used for the, the piping. So I grab those just because they're already there. And I'm gonna grab a face in here, and sometimes Max bugs out. We'll see if it behaves while I'm recording. And we're gonna click one face in this island that we want, and we're gonna click expand polygon to to seams. So it's gonna grab all of that in there, right? Right. Pretty easy. And then all we're gonna click here is quick peel. And then it, it peels it out for us. And because this is a very square object, this is really easy. And that's kind of why I chose this chair, just to teach these principles. As you were saying, it's a pretty, it's a really basic model, okay, to be really honest. Right. Um, but I don't want, I don't want someone to get caught up on uh, uh, fighting a really hard model to understand the simplicity right. behind this workflow. So right. essentially, that is it. And if you look, um, if I try to get this positioned correctly, maybe this is a better example. See how nice and, and neat and even these squares are um, right. versus these up top. These are, are getting stretched and yanked or squished from left to right, right? Or being stretched right. along this. But that's literally it. So if I grab, and I'm going to grab the top edge, I'm going to grab the back edge, oops, and then I'm going to grab the bottom edge down here. Same deal. We're going to say loop, create the seam. We're going to go to the face, and we're going to say this expand to polygon selection. It selects them in the window, and then we say quick peel. Done. Okay, um, so on these, sometimes when you do quick peel, uh, say there's like more curves or something like that, uh, it doesn't always do the best. Uh, what's the what is it called? Like it needs to be relaxed more or something. Like that. Sorry, I don't know all the terminology. No, no, you're good. Do you know what I'm? Do you know what I'm saying? Like it ends up looking kind of there. funky. Yeah, and so like, yeah. how would you relax it more from there? So there's or another tool. That? Yeah, there's another tool. Where's the pelt? Yeah, it's over here. Um, so there's this pelt tool, uh, we can click and it, what it does actually, yeah, we start this pelt and it, it basically, or virtually pulls all the selections in, in different, uh, directions to try to lay it real flat. Um, it's the same with the, the relax kind of does the, the same deal. So actually if I try relax, so it starts to kind of like pull rubber bands and it tries to like stretch it out, uh, to help some of that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Is that the only tool that you use? Pretty much. Yeah. Between yeah. those two, I use a lot of quick peel. Um, you can even do uh, flatten custom, but when I do flatten custom, you end up like if you look here, it like broke all this off. So we get, right. if I move this off, we get like this little dude, beep, there's this little triangle in the corner. It just gets messy really quickly. Yeah. It just creates uh, more work for you. Yeah. So. Again, maybe um, I'm gonna continue to do other tutorials and we're gonna get into harder, harder models to UV. Um, but that's kind of in a nutshell uh, yeah. with, with, my, with my method of cutting things up. Now, 
-hmm. let's say like for another example we have a cylinder like this and actually let's make it a quad um, so you heard my scolding in the other video about keeping things quads uh i didn't <laughs> Yeah. Did you not hear I don't, that? I don't, I don't, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I've gotten pretty good at that. <clears throat> All the surfaces. Yeah. You know what that was? It called ingons or something? Yeah, ingons, stars, poles. There's a bunch of them. Um, so let's say that. So we got this same deal here. Uh, essentially, we're grabbing one of these edges, and it can be anything. Um, it can be any seam. Now we want to hide them, which is a good point. I'll get to that in a second. So if I grab this, same deal. We're gonna grab and we're gonna uh, peel it. Now, another thing that I use is rescale elements a lot. So what this does is it, uh, if you notice, if I turn my checkerboard back on, uh, they're kind of the same. Sometimes it'll be like this where uh, this thing will be real small. So you right. get, uh, you know, big squares, little squares. So if you highlight everything, you can just click this uh, rescale element and it makes them all the same. And then I also use Pack Custom, and it puts it all into that one-to-one -one space real nicely. Right, and the, and the reason for this is when you export to do textures and substance, substance painter, you don't want one like part of the shape having higher resolution than the other part. It looks kind of all off or whatever, right? Yeah, a couple reasons. Um, one of them is is you you want this in the zero to one space, so you can't have stuff off like this. Um, and I, what mm -hmm. I actually think it does is it repeats it to this side, if I'm not mistaken. Right. But um, yeah. So yeah, you want them all in in one side and you want them all the same size because uh, it's called, um, and I actually just replied to a comment on the YouTube channel about this, uh, texel density. So mm -hmm. the more uh, of one of these UV shells that's taking up this uh, zero to one space, the more pixels it's gonna be associated with that one UV island. So if right. I, you know, if I bring this real big, and again, you can't have overlapping like this, but um, do you see how there's, Let's pretend each one of these squares is a pixel. This right. has more pixels than these going up. Um, right. That's what we want. We want it to all be the same texel density. Um, and that's right. what that rescales helps. And then also the pack right. custom to get them all in there nicely. Um, yep. There are times where we want to override this too, uh, to be completely transparent. Like, let's say this is like a candle sitting on a, a table, right? Um, mm -hmm. We don't want to get rid of the faces underneath, maybe, because you see it in a reflection if it's on a glass table, something like that. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is we can just manually like drop this real small, put it off in the corner, and then and then rescale or pack these. And maybe it'll give, right. sometimes it'll give more room to these. And we don't really need to see, actually it'd be this one. We don't really need to see this bottom one, right? Because it's right. yeah. pushed up against the table, you know? Um, yep. So yeah, that. And then again, back to hiding seams. So um, let me finish this guy real quick and then I'll yep. explain that. Basically, you can sometimes see these seams. Uh, you see it a lot in, more so in character kind of work uh, mm. where it looks really bad. You can see like where one texture meets up against another um, right. and it's no bueno. Where's my relax? No, this one. Um, so we want to be careful about where these seams are to kind of hide them and put them in places where we're not gonna see them. Um, let's see if this will work. Yeah. So it ends up, to be honest, gets really friggin' tedious, dude. Like, it's probably the most cre uncreative thing that we do. Um, and <laughs> I think why, like a lot, I personally don't wanna spend a lot, of, didn't wanna spend a lot of time in the beginning, um, cause it's super boring, dude. Yeah. Cause look at now, I've gotta do this on everything that's in that chair. <laughs> like. Yeah. So again, same deal, uh, rescale. Actually, let me back out just so you can see. They're all over the place. They're not in the one-to-one -one spot. If I go to checkerboard, uh, you know, this one's really dense. This one's not so much. At least they're not stretching anymore, right? Right. You know, super dense, not dense. So uh, select them all. Again, rescale. So now they're all the same size, but we need to then get them in this one-to-one um, -one space. And we do that by clicking that. Um, other options I use in this, this has a drop down. If you guys see, it goes into custom. Um, rotate clusters is really nice. Uh, we want to make sure, and I've expressed this a lot of times, uh, that things are, are up and down, left and right. They're not cutting diagonally as much as possible. Um, I'll come back to that. And then fill holes. 
I'll come back to that too. Actually, so let's show you this. So look at, actually, let me go back. This is the, just the standard packing, right? Not the custom pack. Um, it takes up a lot. It's really tight, which is good. But if I go to the, the standard or the um, recursive packing, and I think there's actually even linear and another one in 2020 now. And say I drop this to 0.007, um, it, it makes them even larger. It does a better job packing. Hmm. And there's a chance too that like, if I wanted to play Tetris here, uh, <laughs> this is a one-click solution. It's not always the best solution. It's just the fastest, right? Um, yeah. Like, check this out. I think this is actually going to work. Uh, see, this is where video games come in handy when you're older. <laughs> uh, so look at, so I can get more out of this by by putting them this way and scaling these right. up. So everyone's all excited about, and I don't hate me. I love the fact that Substance Painter has an un, an automatic un, uh, UV unwrap now in it. Have you seen that? Uh, no, I, I haven't actually used it. So Substance Painter will do that for you automatically now, which is pretty dope. Um, mm. Where I think it's beneficial is for someone who's not um, a 3D artist in the modeling sense, but they're becoming a texture artist. There's a lot of artists out there that quote unquote, and I'm doing air quotes, just texture that are flipping amazing, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe don't have access to 3D software to do so, uh, like a 3D package. But there's Blender and stuff now that you can you know, learn, but uh, it allows them to texture an asset without UVs. They can toss it in and get away with it. Um, they're not ideal like any one-click solution. Same thing with ZBrush and their um, Unwrap. Um, it's not very clean, but uh, it's like a quick and dirty solution if need be. Right. Um, okay. So we sometimes we can get away with UVs like this. Each one is on its own island. This is like maybe let's say step two, like a, a, a optimizing UVs. First one would be just grabbing the entire thing like in the viewport like this. And if I was to turn off back face culling so that it gets the backsides of things too, and just go blam, flatten custom, rescale pack. When I'm like turning around in something in 48 hours, to be completely honest, I use this all the time. Um, how we're not super optimized, right? So if we started cutting seams, we get to level two, still not fully optimized. Um, the last thing again about hiding seams is where we want these to be is uh, we can sew parts of these, uh, parts of this object together, um, and it it gets rid of these seams nicely for us, uh, and it it's a t makes it a little easier texturing. Um, triplaner and other things in Substance Painter. Have you played with that at all? Uh, no. Okay, it's like a a way. It's like a modifier in Substance Painter to to blend the seam. So. Oh it, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I haven't used it though. That's dope. I would check into that. Play with that. If you ever see an object that you've got a seam on, play with this, uh, the rounding corner uh, triplanar thing, and it'll help with that. Um, another way is for us to just tell Max, let's connect this island here with this island here uh, so it's seamless. Um, and if you notice, this island here, oops, if I move this off to the side, let's see, this one's right here. We need to make sure that the top is the top and the bottom is the bottom. So if I turn off this here, select by element, it's not gonna select the whole thing, it'll just select the faces. So then I know that this is upright, right? So the top's the top, the bottom's the bottom. Otherwise, it's rotated. You know, like, and if we try to sew that, that's gonna be no bueno. Follow me? Right. Yep. Okay, uh, rotate this guy. So we're gonna tell it, um, we wanna connect these two together. So I'm gonna take these seams here. Oh, let's turn this off. Oh, now is the other one rotated? Let's see, where's this guy? Oh, that's not the right part, is it? No, it is. No, it's not. So that's the front, that's the side. Okay. So this actually needs to be rotated this way. Another thing I want to bring up are there are special UV maps that help you show where, which things are up, down, left, right. Let me see if I can find that. Um, what would you call it? Like UV texture? Let's see. Yeah, so should I get into this? Um, I can apply this to the model and it'll oh, it'll let me know like, you know, if, if it's in the right area. Like if you get um, 
purple here and then green here, you know it's like nowhere close to each other. Yeah, the newer versions of Max actually have uh, some of those already in that drop down where it says checkered pattern up in the top right. If you yeah. click on that, yeah, there's another option that gives you one of those maps. Okay. Basically. So that's, yeah, that's kind of for helping troubleshoot. And again, that helps you with like, you know, I, I, it wasn't clear that this was uh, like, this is the top and this is the bottom, right? And you can get into trouble with that. So um, again, what I was trying to do is connect these. So I'll grab these here. We'll just grab one side and we're gonna connect them together to try to help eliminate seams. So um, grab all those. It shows blue, like this is the other side that it's gonna connect to. And we just they stitch custom. And if you look in the model, this is now one seamless piece. Yep. And we we virtually break it apart the way we want it and then sew things back together the way we want it. Um, right. And actually this needs to get done too. So let me add that, let me add this guy. And then let's do this side too, actually. No, 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 I wanna do this side. Cause I want these seams either in the back or on the bottom because the chair is like this, right? This is the right side of the chair for facing it. Uh, I don't want to see those. Uh, right. So that's where we're going to tuck them back there. So let me do this guy real quick. It is tedious. It's super tedious. Yeah. And then that. we'll do wings up here. It's one of those things where you just put music on or you use like that one click solution and just quick and dirty. I hate to say it, but there's times when I just have clients that don't, they don't have time to do custom everything. Right. You know, and they, at the end of the day, sometimes they, you know, it's things that they don't notice that is value added for us as artists, but um, is not for them for their purpose, you know? Right. It's like, I want to make everything amazing. So, um, this is one giant island. This is quote unquote ideal. Uh, however, if you notice, if I go to pack this, um, it doesn't, it one, it rotates it because of the settings that it's on. So I need to get rid of that, so rotate. But the texel density, it's not ideal. We have all this wasted space. So, or do you understand what I say when I say that? It's got wasted yeah. space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there's no other shapes in all these blank areas around the map. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say this is a, a 2K map. This is probably only taking up 70, 750 pixels of this 2K map. Like mm -hmm. you just wasted space. So there's this fine line in my mind between this, which is quote unquote ideal for something super seamless and just wasting the heck out of pixels. Um, mm -hmm. With things like um, Unreal Engine, uh, it's more important to make sure that we our seams are okay or with characters right but uh with something like this i probably would leave these cut off so i'd go back here select these guys and i would say uh break and probably this guy down here too now the nice thing is the benefit we have now thinking about this is we have when i break these let's go back and we'll do pack gives you more more see but again uh there's a lot of this wasted space. So it's it's something we have to decide, do we need it to be super seamless or are we okay with using something like triplanar um, and breaking these and keeping these disconnected? I go back and break these because uh, you just get a better, you get a better pack. It's uh, the texel density is a lot better, right? Right. Um, so things we need to think about, there's no right answer. There's no, you need to do this every time unless you have a very specialized workflow, it's more of a case by case uh, kind of thing. And, and what do you need for your, the needs of your workflow in whatever industry that you're in? Um, I was trying to back out of that, but it's just no. Um, questions with that? Oh, I did want to say, uh, back out. Um, the nice thing is, is we're getting the piping blocking. Oh, not on this one. The piping blocking our seams. So right. at the end of the day, we can hide, use other things to hide seams, maybe a necklace on a character. We could have an mm -hmm. additional object, like this is our necklace and this is the chest of the character where we're hiding seams that way. Um, okay. It's not always the case, but ideal, I guess. Questions? No, I think I'm, I'm good right now. I understand what's going on. Okay. 
it's pretty simple. Let's just do another one real quick. Kind of look at things. Again, level one, highlight the entire thing, break it off. You get these little like, like that's gonna cause a problem in a uh, painter. But I don't know, sometimes, sometimes we need it to be quick and dirty. Um, we can't spend a ton of time on it. But if I was to just go like this, let me just break some of this up. Oh, uh, another good thing, resetting UVs. Let's say you started, you screwed up, we forgot where you left off. Um, we're gonna turn off this back, ignore back face. So we'll highlight the whole thing, or we can just highlight everything up here um, and just click this, uh, is it quick peel? No, no, it's um, this planar one. It just literally like wipes all your seams out. Oh. Uh, See what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, what was the button again? Uh, quick planar. Quick planar. Yeah, so we can, Select the entire thing here. We can drag out over here. Um, we can drag out in here as long as this ignore back face is off. And then, uh, yeah, quick planer. Pew. Let me see if I if I go back, control Z it. Yeah, see how there's all the green lines? Mm -hmm. and sometimes Max bugs out where it'll say it's a green line or seam or blue, and then it like doesn't respect it when you go and you click, uh, you, know, you click here and say, I want this island, it'll do this. So sometimes I have to restart Max as a heads up for those who are having that issue. But um, so real quickly, let me just kind of grab some of this stuff. So I just grab the Ys in kind of all my corners. And I'll show you how quickly this ends up. Uh, I won't get greedy. So if I do this, phew, that's got a lot of that portion kind of wrapped up. Or uh, yeah kind of grabbing loops and it'll go to it till it hits another Y, which is cool. And that's kind of what we want, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do, control Z, ooh. Works nice with this model. Yeah, it's super boxy. Like again, we'll get into more and more complex stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't, I don't, I try not to overwhelm people. I try not to overwhelm people, <laughs> especially when they're learning um, just the basic principles of this stuff. Cause you know how confusing this stuff can be especially when you're new it's like you learn to model and then you're like okay cool i want to make it look cool and then you're like oh you got a uv or mesh and you're like what yeah. and then the rabbit hole of that you know like so actually yeah i thought i, I always just assumed that uving was going to be super simple but it's not especially if you want it to look really good as like some sort of like hero model or something that's zoomed way in at 4k it's like you want all your seams and UV to look all perfect, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. There's, yeah, it's hard. It's harder with, with hero type shots and especially with you doing product stuff, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, it, you've got to have a ton of detail similar to the bag. Like I could have even pushed that further by um, grabbing a ton more texture sets off of it. Um, mm -hmm. Breaking it up more. So there's more maps. I think I only had like, five texture sets, four texture sets, but I mean, you would literally part out one strap. It gets its own 4K texture. The, the front yeah. of the base, not even the entire base, the front of right. the base, that gets its own texture set. Like, and then you end up having a shit ton of textures, but um, it's just how it sometimes needs to be with some of these workflows. Mm -hmm. So like this guy's kind of wonky. Why is he wonky? If I do a peel, oh, I just didn't peel it. So uh, are, are there, so all your all these uh, uh, these shapes are all di diagonal. Is there a way to uh, straighten everything so it's uh, on? You know what I'm saying, like uh, straight up and down. Like this. <laughs> yeah. Which one was that? So check this out. Uh, this guy, you grab the face that you want to be linear, uh -huh. and then it's this uh, align to edge. Oh, uh, okay. Um, sometimes it's kind of wonky, like. It, it, didn't, it didn't want to do this perfect. Um, sometimes we can grab another cool tool is if I go to face mode and say, grab the entire island. So if I click, I get that. Uh, there's this straighten selection and it gives us really nice linear lines. Right. Um, pros and cons. So like there's pros and cons to everything. Uh, this will sometimes add warping to the UV map itself. Sometimes right. it's like not even, it's negligible. And sometimes it's really bad. So again, that's that case by case. Let's see if I turn this off. It's not too bad. Let me see if I can get zoom like in here more. Crates or something. Like yeah, that. like if I was to maybe take one of these. Oops. If I was to take this, 
and just yank it. Like, mm. so you'll see this squishing. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to give us an amazing flipping bake because in, in uh, Painter, because it's super linear. Um, and again, it's pixels. Pixels are square. Uh, it doesn't like to deal with diagonals. It wants to be up and down, left, right. right. So in for the case of this guy, that might be fine because we're not seeing that stretching that's in that corner. Um, so again, a trade-off. Um, but I could do that to all of these. Like, let me see if I... And it, look, at it, it'll even like... It'll even straighten them for us to some extent. Let's see what right. that let's see what that gets us. Uh, what else? Is that it? So like these guys, I'll just grab this top face or this top edge. That's kind of cool that we ran into this issue to to talk about this. And this button as a heads up, uh, where to go? Oh, this guy. Um, you have to one. You have to be in face mode. Uh, yeah. If it's not a linear, if it's not all squares, if you have triangles mm -hmm. and you click this, it's going to trash the UVs. Like you're going to get this weird reaction. So if anyone gets that at home, you know why. Um, there's either like a seam that's broken. Like, let me see if I can do it. So I show you guys. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I broke Whoa. one seam and this is what you get. So, so I show you guys what I did. I broke this guy. Mm. Oh, hey. Behave, I'm recording. See this dude? And where is this guy? Uh, it's under here. Let's see if I go to four. Okay, so all I did is add this little seam and it trashes the UVs when you, when you use this guy. Mm. So make sure, go around your entire object. One, make sure it's quads. I'm always gonna preach you need to be working in quads. Um, right. For reasons like this, um, Make sure there's no triangles. Make sure there's no non-gons. Make sure um, all of these seams are connected and everything is a true like quad flow and that button will work great for you guys, mm -hmm. essentially. Uh, so we'll seam that up. And then same with this guy. I can, let's see, we'll straighten it. Yeah. So grab the entire thing. We'll go uh, rescale elements, pack custom. And I don't know if I would want to, let's actually, let's look at these to make sure. So what I like to do is because it doesn't give us a good, super good reading like this could be super stretched and we wouldn't know it. I just take mm -hmm. them and I make them real big and then we can actually see if they're stretching. So like see some of this, we're getting, they're not square, they're more rectangle. Yep. We're getting a little stretching and I think it's because we used this straighten selection. Right. Um, so, and actually let's see if I just was to grab this guy and say quick peel, see how that fixes all that? Mm -hmm. and that's it's pretty straight like that's not going to give us a problem in painter mm -hmm. so again those trade-offs you know it's really flipping quick to just grab it you know and click this button is it stretching is it too much stretching for your workflow you know can you get away with it um same deal again if this is going to be a chair sitting in the corner of a giant lobby there's no way you're going to see like these right. aren't perfectly square, you know, like, or, you know, it's the front, like make sure the front's real nice looking in the back, whatever kind of deal. Um, cool. Um, piping. Should I show you how to do that real quick? Yeah. Might as well. Since we're here, same kind of deal. I actually think when you click um, generate mapping cords down here, it'll give you UVs. So I, I think I don't even need to UV these. Let's take a look. Yeah, look at it. It's flipping huge. Wait, what did you just do? Uh, so um, under sweep, which is a kick-ass modifier that I've used the heck out of, oh. um, you have uh, generate oh, generate mapping cords. Mm -hmm. And it says uh, UV or real world scale. You don't necessarily need that on because it will create them regardless. But if I jump in here, I now have UVs like this guy is one long it's one long dude um, so we have them broken up like per it's hard to see so you see that guy it's just one yeah. long tube that's already cut up right so we can choose now this has its problem of its own because check this out if I go um, rescale elements to make them all in scale with each other and then I go to pack <laughs> look how bad this pack is right so yeah. 2K map takes up like 10 pixels of the 2K map. Like 
not efficient, not, it's not gonna look good. Um, right. So here's where I go in and I'll, let me turn wireframe on. I grab this, I'll cut these corners off. So make that a seam. Um, if we could get away with not doing these front ends, I would try to maybe do that if it would work, not cut this, but I don't think we're gonna be able to. So let me just cut all these corners for demonstration's sake. I feel like I'm beating that to death, but it making sense not to keep your seams like super obvious, right? Right. Sometimes you need to though. And again, that triplanar, there's other things that like are our saving grace anymore that we like triplanar, we didn't have four years ago, didn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, so now this is a seam here. I can do the same thing where I grab expand selection to seam and I have a seam at the top and seam the bottom. And then I just say um, peel and boop, there you go. And then I can do, because these are quads and I know they're quads, I can click on this guy and it fixes them up. Um, or you can, if again, if I'm in a pinch and I just don't have the time to care, um, I can go in and grab the center of these of something really long, like actually this guy. Let's see. No, that's not too, too long. Oh, that's already broken. So yeah, I can just grab this guy here. Hey. And then um, break. Right. So then if I grab these guys that are left, so we have these smaller islands, if I, so smaller, that's eh, kind of larger, but, and then actually this dude needs to get cut again. So, and again, this is, I'm not taking into consideration seams. If I'm in a pinch, I, I, I'll do this to be honest. Um, so then if I go rescale, pack, it gets better. But the thing that's preventing it from getting even bigger is this dude. So it's just like trying to get them cut where they should be if, if you care. If you don't care, um, you just keep breaking uh, and trying to get these smaller sections so that you get, or yeah, another idea. So break, keep breaking sections so that you get bite size that end up packing in and taking up more of this space. Or you end up just tossing this on another island with other small things, right? Like, um, let me break this. I'll say pack. See how it's getting better and better each, each time we break? Mm -hmm. um, we could take this piping section and I can put it on end isolation. I can put it on the same as this piping. So check this out. I'm going to delete this guy. I'm going to delete both so that they go over equally. And I'm going to copy, not instance, because uh, I want to connect them. Mm -hmm. So Max will allow us, if I do one UV map on both of these, um, you can't tell because they're overlapping on each other. But if I grab these and just say pack, both of them now are sharing this one UV texture. And we get a lot less wasted space than if you were to just have this piping be on its own by itself. Right. That makes sense? Yep. Okay. And two, like we could toss it with this guy, have these two together on one set, right? Have these mm -hmm. two together on one set. Um, so big thing, I need to go through and just take some time. Matt, maybe if uh, you don't have any more questions, maybe I'll let you go and do this offline and like speed it okay. up for people so that they can see. Um, any other questions maybe? Like any scenarios that might've caused issues for you in the past? Uh, I was having an issue where I was using that weld uh, button and yeah. it, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't weld. I, I was trying you know, like I had this, these uh, seams that were selected and then the other part was lining up, uh, lighting up blue. And then I tried to, I clicked the weld button. It didn't do anything. So that was one issue that I kept running into. I don't know, you know, it could be a case by case thing. So it's probably hard to say without actually seeing the model, but I know uh, when I click too, like, let's say I butt these guys up, right? And these are all nice. This is kind of one of the scenarios that I know where it won't seem for me. Um, and I say, if I grab, hey, behave, this guy, this guy, like if I do this, and then I click seam, sometimes it doesn't go together, or this is kind of funky right now, like there's another seam here for some reason. So- Yeah, um, yeah it was similar to that. that yeah. That my workaround is I just click the one seam I need. Uh, so actually, this needs to be, if I grab these, it should be these two. 
So watch, if I try it again, actually you can see this a little better. If I grab both sides, it won't weld, but if I grab one side, it will weld. So now it's hmm. making a flipping liar out of me. But if I grab two, it won't work. If I grab one, I don't know if it's a maxism, then it connects. Hmm. Um, so I don't know if you have, if you try, if you have that issue, try grabbing just one side and two, yeah. this, this stuff bugs out on me all the time, dude. Like when, as I'm working, um, there's no rhyme or reason to it sometimes. Like you'll do the same operation and then all of a sudden one time it just stops working for you. Um, right. So it's just kind of the nature of our software, unfortunately. Dang it. I know. <laughs> I know. No magic answers, unfortunately. So this is a good scenario where um, looking at stretching. Oh, and I wanted to show something else. So these... These are warped, right? Like, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Like, this is fine aside for the bake. Um, and it might not cause an issue because let's say if I just took, here's our seam right here. If I just took this and went, do, tucked it in the back uh, 90 degrees, um, mm -hmm. opened it back up. The problem we're going to have is going to be at the top and at the bottom. But the top's stuffed in there, right? And then the mm -hmm. bottom is just kind of down at the bottom. So leaving it kind of wonky like this could help. Um, if I do this, because it's all quads and linear, um, it straightens them, which would give us a better bake, but check this out now. Then uh, these get kind of wonky. Whoa. So again, it's this case by case, unless we're like going in there and being like, okay, this one needs to be exactly, you know, like here and move it over. Um, sometimes it's okay to leave things a little wonky. Like this will give us a better texture uh, oh, like wood, this wouldn't be good because the grain will follow this. So the grain will be going up like at a diagonal. We can grab like all of these guys here in the center and use this button, um, align horizontally to pivot, and it straightens them out. Oh, okay. Um, the problem is, is it straightens out everything that you grab. So if I was to grab these like this, uh, dude, and go, it like collapses it because there's technically a break in there hmm. so we have to be careful about that i should be able to can i do that yeah so again grab you can use verts and edges grab that and i'll say loop and then i'll say uh flatten or straighten you still get the angle which is good it happens but see but then too look at we get weird we get weird right. stuff so it's it's a it's a cat and mouse game i know there's not like a, a super um, straight answer to this stuff, unfortunately. What would I do, I guess? To be completely honest, um, I'd, probably, I'd probably just leave them broken. They're mm. legs of a chair like that. You get the nice texture, um, not texture, the linear fashion of the squares. So if I did like a wood, the grain would follow this real nicely. Mm -hmm. Another thing, yeah. Uh, Let's say your grain's running left to right, but my UV shell is um, sideways like this. I have to know in advance uh, if, if uh, the, the grain's running left and right, it's gonna be running up and down on our model. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yep. So um, flipping these, you can use this button 90. So having some forethought on that and, and where things are gonna be. Um, yeah. yeah, the bottom piece could probably be small, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We don't see it again. If you don't see it, might as well delete it. Um, however, when, when I model for like CG trader, I'll throw my account in the description so you guys can kind of look at some of that stuff. Um, I try to leave as much flexibility for the model buyer when they purchase. So if I was to sell it, I wouldn't cut the bottom out. I would allow someone else to cut it out if they needed to. Um, because let's say they need this chair for an animation, where it, it gets blown off with a storm uh, and you need to see the bottom side and I've gone and deleted it to help them quote unquote with optimization. Um, I've gone and deleted faces that they need. So um, again, by case, like if you're working by, by yourself, you know you're not gonna need those or your company's not gonna need them if it's like a company asset. Um, you can get rid of them and it'll save memory during rendering um, or just even make your viewport a little more uh, peppy. Um, but yeah, just, I guess it's hard. It's hard to say. It depends on why uh, you're modeling the asset. But yeah, if you don't need to see that, tuck it in the corner, dude. And I can actually like take this 
and then do a repack. Um, so if there is something, like maybe it would work better up here on this guy. Let's say like these two. I knew like these three. They were, they were maybe running on the backside here. Yeah, so see these? Oh, there you go, yeah. So say those are running back there. I can take these and just stuff them. And actually, let's say this because we'll see it a little better. I can just stuff them in the corner, boop, like so, and then take the rest of these and do a pack on these. Oops. And I don't, I can't overlap, but I can do that. These gotcha. are real small, you know. And but it's nice that you can, you can grab these and then use this tool again. Um, yeah, I do, I do do this. I use this workflow a lot for stashing mm -hmm. stuff we don't need, you know. Right. But that um. Sense. Any more questions? Uh, I think I'm, I think I'm good. Actually. You're good for now. Big thing yeah. when you're done. Uh, is this guy done? Yeah, let's finish him out. Uh, scale pack. Let's call that done. Even though, again, we'd want to find stuff to put in there. Um, I like to just for, for backup purposes, um, stash this. So I'll shift drag it off to the side. We'll say copy, it's over here. It has all of its modifiers on it. And then what I'll do is I'll bake this down. So I'll go convert to, uh, convert to editable poly. Now the UVs are baked into this asset. So if I was to export this out into another program, Substance Painter, Mar Marmoset, any texturing software, any anything else, the, um, the UVs are now baked into the model and can go over to other programs. Um, how you retrieve that is by just tossing another UV map on it. Uh, UV modifier map on it, and it brings them back up. Um, same goes if you're using other people's models. So if you have purchased something on CG Trader uh, and it comes in without a UV modifier and the textures are looking funky, sometimes you have to toss an, an unwrap on it to, to read the UV information, and then you can add textures and things to it. Okay. Cool. Cool. I appreciate awesome. you being part of today's chat, man. Uh, yeah, man. I'm going to keep... Awesome. I'm going to continue on. And in the future, you know, if, if you want to do more sit downs like this, maybe with something specific, maybe we can do your bag. Um, Matt was telling me offline that, was it offline or were you telling me in this stream? Yeah, offline, yeah. Um, he was doing a bag for a client, like a chip, a chip bag that, that he wanted to have their brand on it. And he was having an issue unwrapping the chip bag, um, which should be relatively easy because it should be some squares, right? Like a rectangle. Um, but yeah, I mean, every model will present its own challenges as we've kind of seen with uh, this model. But um, if you'd be up for it, Matt, I'd be down to play around with that with you and try to troubleshoot. I think troubleshooting with someone is good to figure out uh, what yep. tools to use, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, 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 that'd be cool. All right, I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna let Matt go so I don't take up all of his time. Um, so you'll see me back in a sec, but uh, thanks for hanging out, right. Matt. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Talk to you later, man. <laughs> Bye.